I'm Georgina Erskine. Uh, I lived at Farley Farm from 1960 onwards. It's a very interesting house to live in. So you grew up at Farley's? I did. That must have been pretty cool. I think I look back now and I think how lucky I was to be there. That what I think a lot of people possibly don't understand is that first and foremost, it was a home. Yeah. It was where we lived. It wasn't precious. Um, we had parties, you know, Picasso's on the walls, ornaments all over the place. Nobody worried about about anything happening. And I don't think anything actually ever did happen. I think everyone was quite respect, respectful of the environment, but not overawed by it because we just lived there. And that was what was so lovely. And when, you know, fancy people came for weekends, they were just coming to a home and everyone, nobody was treated any differently to anybody else that might be there for lunch or for dinner. Um, yeah, I think I was very lucky to live there. Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, very, very few people um, had airs and graces of any sort whatsoever. Mm. I, I, honestly, I think Roland and Lee were such generous people. Yeah. And so welcoming, and Patsy as well. That, yeah. You know, Patsy would put somebody in their place anyway. So Patsy is your mum? Yeah, she is indeed. Patsy initially came to Farley's to be Dad's nanny for two weeks. I think it was six weeks. Six weeks, was that's I, it. Yeah, six what, weeks. Six weeks, yes. Yeah, and ended up staying in... <laughs> 60, 60 odd years, yeah. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. She used to help Lee with a lot of her cooking, didn't she? Did you ever get pulled into doing chopping and slicing and all that jazz. I, I don't think there was anybody who didn't end up chopping and slicing and picking and peeling and certainly Patsy, but which is always amazing because she was a vegetarian mm. and brought up as a vegetarian. So, But the only thing she ever asked you to taste was a sauce. If she was making a sauce she, because she wouldn't be sure of how much it was too salty. salty or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. What would happen was during the week it was quiet and then Friday night Lee and Roland would come home from London and uh, kind of de-stress really from London and get into that yeah. and then be there Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday where, you know, Lee was moaning that she was there and Roland was loving that he was there, you know, <laughs> again. <laughs> fucking countryside she used to say so much noisier than London <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patsy told me that um, she thought that the, the one of the reasons why Lee started cooking in the first place was because it was the only warm room in the, in the whole house because of the Rayburn to start off with and then, yeah, the, and uh, then the Arca more than likely yeah. yes <laughs> and then if we were having visitors they would usually usually come on Saturday nobody was I can't think of anybody who, there were people who weren't very nice. Oh, go on, say some names. <laughs> Peggy. Guggenheim. Guggenheim. Oh, yeah. really? Yes, yes. Why, why, was she, she just not nice to kids or just not nice? She wasn't very nice to anybody, really. She was a terrible snob. And when you think of some of the people who came there who might well have behaved like that, but yeah. she absolutely did. So Man Ray, he came a lot in the 60s, right? Yeah. What were they like when they, they were came? Just really good fun. I mean, yeah, I mean, Man Ray had such a sense of humour and um, he was a very good chess player. I used to play chess with him and he, yeah. he let me beat him once. Did he? And I'll tell you another thing about him. When we went to Paris, I was for the opening in, at the um, Petit Palais Picasso exhibition, so it must have been about 64, 65, I don't know, somewhere like that. But we went round to his flat for drinks before dinner and he had a television he picked up a gun and he shot it at the television, and the television came on. No way! And we were absolutely gobsmacked, and it must have been the first time we sort of saw a remote control, or how he did it, I have no oh, wow. idea. So he'd but, kind of manipulated a remote control to look like a gun? Yeah, but I didn't that's... even know what a remote control was as early as that. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. And, you know, some people, you were on your best behaviour while they were there, and other people, um, you could just really relax and enjoy. And so Miro came as well? Miro came. Um, I don't remember. He obviously had a wife, but I don't remember that. Um, but he was there and he was, yeah, he was mucked in like with everybody else. And Tony had the, the caravan down 
mm. by his workshop. So how did it come that he did the painting in Dad's caravan? I don't, I don't know. But I mean, that's the thing. In those days, you would have just have done it and not thought about it. No. You no. know, just wouldn't have thought about yes. it. Sonia Orwell? Sonia Orwell was, she took me under her wing. Did she? She did indeed. She, um, yeah, she saw me as, <laughs> she, I think she saw me as a project. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I got to about 16, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so she told me that I had to pull my finger out and get stuck into the A-levels a bit. And I was doing Orwell, one of George Orwell's books. For oh, really? <laughs> Did she give you like some crib notes and stuff? Yeah, except I only got C plus for one of her essays, which was a bit annoying. <laughs> I told her that. <laughs> She said, I don't believe it. I said, well, she said, you obviously didn't write it down properly. I said, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what about Valentine? Valentine, yes. She, uh, she was lovely. She wasn't the easiest person to, to deal with. <laughs> she just had sort of quite, quite uh, airy-fairy ideas. You know, you have to have your tarot cards read and <laughs> make a decision about things. And, um, but she was there a lot. And in fact... You know, I was there when she died. I was there the, the night that she died, yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, and when I think of the number of people who went to Farley's, and it sounds weird, but went to Farley's to die, mm -hmm. um, to be looked after there in lovely surroundings, because it was, they, you know, they knew Roland and Lee, but it was, I mean, they were... Very, very generous people. And so, what was he? What was Roland like? He was. Like? He was actually very shy. He he wasn't a natural extrovert at all. I never forget one night. I was always allowed out as long as I said where I was going and roughly what time I'd be home. Mm -hmm. And this one night, I'd been out on the rad. When we came back, Patsy. By this time, it was quite late. It was sort of like breakfast time. Mm. And Patsy came storming downstairs. And was you been get out boys go on get out and Patsy never got angry like that anyway so anyway and Roland was sitting there having his breakfast didn't say anything until about half an hour later he said I'm just going into Helsham does anyone want anything and I said no thank you and he said I think you'd like to come with me wouldn't you and I said yes <laughs> got into the car Oh my God! We drove all the way to Helsham, about six miles. Didn't speak a word. Uh oh. Did the shopping. Drove all the way back. Just about got to the gate, and he turned to me and said, "Don't you ever do that again." And I never did it again. But I brought that up with him some years later. Oh yeah. And he said, "Do you know why I didn't say anything all that time?" He said, because I was terrified of what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he never yeah, had to say anything before, so oh. he was having to, you know, to, you, you, to, to say something to me because I'd been a naughty girl, you know. <laughs> so, if you were to describe Lee to somebody, how would you describe her? Difficult. I think probably the most difficult person I've ever met. Yeah. Um, and and sad. I mean, I, I I still feel sad that I never got to know her um, for the person that she wanted to be. Yeah. Because and she couldn't be because she got all this trauma mm. there. But, I mean, Lee was somebody that you wanted in your corner when you had a problem. Okay. Lee was fantastic you know if you are upset or worried um, or needed help go to her and I think it, it gave her an opportunity to give something back because most of the time I think she was very conscious that she was probably not the best influence yeah. and not the best person to to live with I mean you know, I look back now at the way Tony and I behaved with her, mm -hmm. and I feel ashamed. I think we both, you know, didn't treat her that well. 
but then it, but that's the thing isn't it because i remember dad telling me about roland bursting into tears when he told hear Roland about the things he'd discovered about Lee mm. in the prison camps and things mm, like mm, that mm. and he at that time he said if only I'd known mm. better and that's the thing isn't yeah, it when you're right. living with somebody who's got mental health problems yeah yeah and particularly in those days when nothing's known about no, it no all you're seeing is this person going like a way off yeah every day. being difficult you know drinking too much being very critical. I mean, she was very critical of us, um, in a, almost spitefully. I mean, you know, she could be she could be unpleasant. Yeah, you know, there's no two ways about it. And so, and we reacted, you know, to her. I mean, we weren't very nice, very nice to her. And what about um, at Christmas time? Christmas was the one time of year when. All the arguments, and there used to be a lot, and there was quite a lot of tension at times. But it was for, for Lee, it was her milieu because she could buy masses of presents, and she was brilliant at it. I mean, not just at masses, which everyone loves, but she put so much thought into all the presents that were given. And it was it as if it was her opportunity. Mm -hmm. to do that and it was it was great and everyone would put aside all their you know arguments and everything and Christmases were just lovely there's lots of photographs I remember Valentine had shingles at one time it was Christmas and so she got it on her face so she put little stars all over her face to cover up the spots where the shingles were and I always remember at one of the bell ringing parties and it was a you know it was the big night of the year the bell ringing party was, the whole house was decorated and had some cotton um, f fake birds right, yeah. that would be put on plants everywhere and there were these fake wax fruit which used to be in a fruit bowl on the dining room table mm -hmm. and everyone used to get absolutely drunk out of their minds because the punch was so strong you know nobody realized it was what it was and I can remember one particular guy whose name I won't mention but he was so drunk that he burst into tears when he saw these birds who had been caught and made to sit on these for hours for the duration oh, of the no, party. Oh no, he didn't realise they were decorations. Yeah. And somebody else tried to thought one of these fruit, I remember, because they were, next day there were tooth marks in it. No! And, yeah, so. so someone had tried to take a, a bite out. Fruit, yes. <laughs> and there's, there's got, I know, I know there's lots of stories about, well I've heard lots of stories about people falling in the fish fish pond. Yes, was yes. That, that was was that a, that, like a that, regular drunk person's? It was something that happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And were you there at Roland's big 80th birthday party? It looks like it was a crazy day. I'm Do just you... trying to think. There's a big picture that Roberta Mata did, where he's done a drawing on the top. And in the top, it's lots of people running around and having a good time and lots of very big willies. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's one guy that's like walking, running around holding a giant willy in his hand. So, you know, no, I don't one... remember that, so I couldn't, I don't think I was there in that case. <laughs> <laughs> sort of thing I would normally remember. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> God, All those can't willies even ask running about around. It now. No. I know. <laughs> There were quite a lot of willies on display, quite a lot of the time, actually. During the summer, most people didn't worry too much how many clothes they had on. And the men positively encouraged the ladies to not be too well-dressed, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, I mean, for you, having lived there and grown up there, that was kind of normal. It was, yes. Yeah. So was it, it, and was it at the time that you knew that it was a bit weird or afterwards? I probably thought it was a bit odd, not odd, but knew it was eccentric at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, I mean, one of the things that Roland insisted that we all did as soon as the sun came out and the temperature went above zero was we ate outside, which Lee absolutely loathed and detested. And I must admit, we all did rather, because it was such a big thing about getting all the food out and yeah. then keeping it hot. And then as soon as a wasp came within a mile, Lee would then throw a, a fit because she was absolutely hysterical about wasps. And did you go around barefoot as well? Um, yeah, yeah. 
I used to, yeah, absolutely. The bracelet, the, the, the ankle bracelet. But no, what was that? That was, that was from Roland, yes, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Patsy used to be very proud about the fact that she did not have one. Yes, they were. So these were the conquest Roland's, yes. um, let's say, partners. Did, and and did Lee and Patsy? What was your impression of their friendship? Devoted to each other for different reasons. Yeah. You know, I think Lee was devoted to Patsy as knowing that she couldn't have the life she had if Patsy hadn't been there to sort of keep everything together and make sure that things didn't fall apart and mm -hmm. and um, and and Patsy genuinely was very fond of Lee and wanted to make sure that she could give her the best that she she could to make her life as good as it could be bearing in mind that you know Lee wasn't easy and but then Lee's life wasn't easy no so I think it was a sort of they, they, they had an understanding of each other that they both needed each other you know for different things and would yeah, would help each other completely. I can always remember um, when we had the Pyrenean mountain dog, who had big bark on her, and I mean, she'd lick anybody to death, except one night, and it was just Patsy and I in the house, and she started going berserk. And Patsy said, now, I don't want to frighten you, but she said, it might be that there's somebody outside. And she said, if there is, just you remember, that this house is just a house and the paintings are just paintings. Mm. She said, we are not to do anything if anything happens. Mm. Do you think that Patsy saying that to you would have been come from Roland? Oh, yes, absolutely. He wouldn't have wanted anything to happen to anybody. Yeah. No. And I can remember so. once, the only time, in fact, that I've ever been to the Ritz for lunch right. was when he was selling a painting. Now, I can't remember which one it was now, but it was obviously going to keep... I mean, he used to joke that it's going to keep the farm going for another year yeah. and he sold it and he, and he said beforehand, oh, if I get, and I can't even remember how much it was now, but he said, if I get, I don't know, £100,000, because this is going back, you know, to the 60s, mm. um, I'll take you all out for lunch. And we all went, oh, good. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and that used to make Patsy laugh because, you know, in, in some, I mean, he was incredibly generous. You know, both of them were, Lee even more than he was, in terms of not worrying about things. But she said he was an absolute nightmare for all the small things. What? Well, another light bulb's gone. One of the things that I always remember, and I try I've never done to do myself, is to talk down to children. Yeah. And, again, most of the people at Farley's, you know, would come, never talk down, to, you know... You, I had to sit at every meal that was there, mm -hmm. even you know whether Tony was there or not. Every meal time, I was there with the grown-ups, and I was never made to feel that I was stuck at the end of the table yeah. and not involved in the conversation. And I can remember from a very early age being encouraged to give my opinion on things and being asked questions, That's you so know, good. which was which was great. And mm -hmm. I think that gave me a huge confidence yeah. about being there. Mm -hmm. I felt that I, I. I deserved to be there. I could, you know, I could hold my own with adults. I could give opinions. I would be asked opinions. And I think that's, yeah, something that I've carried with me through my life, which I'm very grateful for. It's given me a life that I guess I would never have imagined because it gave me opportunities which I never imagined I would ever have. I mean, like, for example, through Sonia um, Orwell, you know, that's how I ended up going to Botswana. Oh, right. I can always remember um, my friend Heather, my best friend and I, we were up in the attic in the blue room having a midnight feast when Tony came rushing upstairs and said, you've got to come downstairs. He's bloody well being given a knighthood. And we went to what? <laughs> <laughs> and we went and rushed down us in our dressing gowns. Yeah. So everyone was chuffed to bits, yeah. Hmm. Lee in particular said, I'm rich, I'm American, and now I'm a fucking lady. <laughs> Is it, I find it quite strange now in the fact that Roland's almost completely forgotten I know. in the art world. I know. With everything that he did, mm -hmm. you know, bringing, along with Herbert Reed, bringing the first international surrealist mm -hmm. exhibition mm -hmm. here, co-founding the ICA, mm -hmm. championing Picasso, mm -hmm. Tapiers, Miro, yep. all these young pop artists mm -hmm. as well. And it's her that's it's her star that's that's shining. I know. I often think that she must be. You know, if she was up there now, she'd be looking down and laughing her head off.
thinking, <laughs> you know, there you go. <laughs> yeah. now, now you're talking about me. Now you can see what I did. But... <laughs>